quite a while ago now, before I had cancer, I did a little list for my wife, which is, which I call in case of need. So she was really worried about what, if something happened to me, I think this happened after I had a case of atrial fibrillation and uh, taken the hospital by ambulance. And she then started to worry a bit more about, about things. And so I did this list and I've heard some examples recently where people haven't done anything like this and they've been in awful quandaries. I know a lady who, um, whose husband told the Macmillan nurse what he wanted done with his ashes. He didn't tell his wife. And the Macmillan nurse can't remember what he said. And the poor woman is... Another lady is terrified of if she went before her husband, he can't even write checks. She does all the financing, so she doesn't know how he'll manage. And so forth. There's lots of, I've met, I've met lots of people that are suddenly stuck in a situation where they don't know what to do when their loved one dies. So hopefully this might help. So I'll share what I've done so far. So I did a few things. Um, from, actually, before I go on, get a leaflet from Macmillan called Live Well and Die Well, or something like that. I thought how to, how to die well. I thought I could, I could sell that to Bruce Willis for the latest film, but actually it's pipped by Macmillan. Their leaflet is, is great. Get that. Um, it doesn't go into a lot of detail, but it's well worth doing. So, well, so what I said to my wife is actually there's different things you can do. If you die at home and it's expected, then call a family doctor and he'll come and, and um, issue a medical certificate and then contact the funeral director. If it's unexpected, dial 111 immediately and ask for advice. An unexpected death may need to be reported to a coroner. So they may ask a post-mortem, an inquest, find that cause of death and so forth. If it's an hospital, the hospital will normally issue a medical certificate and a formal notice and they will support you. Um, next steps you need. Then you would need to register the death within five days at the register office. So the list I've given my wife is she needs my birth certificate and where to find it, my NSS medical card or my number, I've given her that, marriage certificate, and I've um, told her where that is, driving licence and that's in my wallet, proof of address, a council tax bill and utility bill. And the register, I need to know my name, my date, place of birth, um, her place, date of birth, our address, recent, recent occupation, and so forth. And once that's done, the register will give a certificate for burial cremation, a certificate of registration of death, and um, use the online Tell Us service. And it will give you various leaflets and, and how to do things. And issue a death certificate, get five copies. <clears throat> Then, contact the solicitor. Contact pension advisor. Contact the savings number, your savings accounts um, and bank accounts. And give her all your, or sorry, <laughs> give them all your account numbers and um, passwords if it's online. Life insurance. If you haven't got life insurance, for goodness sake, get it. It's not that expensive nowadays. Fortunately, I took a policy out a while ago and it will pay out um, a sum in the event of my death before 22nd of March, 2030. You know, you know, I hope it won't be claimed, but I've got a feeling it will be. But, the things that the leaflets don't tell you is about your computers and about your social networking. 
make sure there's nothing on your computers that you may wish to keep or of any importance um, and get someone you know to wipe it clean and give it to charity but for goodness sake make sure there's nothing on there that you don't want your partner to see it's look at your computer and your laptop and your ipad and iphone and think if an if an 11 year old were able to access that and go all through it what would they find if there's anything there that's going to cause distress to your partner get rid of it delete it it's not worth it even things that could be misunderstood or misconstrued get rid of it just just don't do it um there isn't any point actually when you've done that it clears your mind and you don't worry so much about things. So it's much better doing that. And I went through my personal belongings. Go through your personal belongings and think what is really important to you and what might be important to others. Could be completely different things. So I've gone through things that are important to me, like one of my model boats, the Beelum, and the Christmas market I made two years ago. Um, I think I've shown you that before. Uh, and I've told her what things could be worth something and uh, things that could sell on eBay. I've also helped write out things you could say at my funeral. And some things I don't really want her to say. You know, I've gone through for my, the marathons I've done and the assorted runs winner of the Newbury Pancake Race, three years running, coming third in the race with my grandchildren, two grandchildren. Um, and I was a page three pin-up in the Daily Mail years and years ago. Um, and uh, I'll have to add that in. But me and um, a friend of mine who worked in the building society, we actually came up with the first buy-to-let mortgage so we can claim that we invented it. Although, had we not invented it, others would have done because it's all going down that way. And I have said what my ashes, um, where are my ashes to go. So make sure you tell your partner where and how you want to do it. And make it realistic. You don't want them scattered out of a helicopter two miles up or over a wood and all blow back at you or, or you know make it so that somewhere they can go to <clears throat> it's important that your partner knows how how crucial this is for them because i know from personal experience with my father-in-law he wanted his ashes put in a certain place and his wife said no no he didn't really mean that he he would be all right if we did this. No, no, he wouldn't be all right if he did this. He wanted that particularly. So make sure it is that. Bef about three weeks before my mum died, my mum thought she had several years left. She, I don't know why she said it then, but she said to me that she wanted two things. She wanted to her ashes to be buried next to my husband no, not my husband, sorry, her husband, my dad, with a wedding ring with them, with her, between them or close by or in their box, which you've done. And the other thing was she wanted someone to look after her teddy bear. Her teddy bear, for goodness sake. She used to collect teddy bears. She used to all shelf all round with lots of teddy bears. I didn't know which one was hers and I didn't know she had a one from childhood. So... I got her to show me, so I was able to do that. Fortunately, my sister knew, and my sister's looking after it. But had she not said that, we wouldn't have known. I would have no idea. So she did say that. So say things that were important to people. Don't assume that they know, because they won't. <clears throat> Another lady I met, um, uh, her father had died, <coughs> and her mother was dying. And she had a, a dress book, a 
and a mother had Alzheimer's. So she wanted to invite people to... No, I got it wrong. Her father had died and her mother had Alzheimer's. She wanted to invite, invite people to her father's funeral. But she didn't know who they were in the address book and her mum couldn't remember. So <sighs> she contacted them all and it didn't really work out. Um, so it'd be useful if you just did a list on people that you quite like invited, but also people that you may not particularly want to be invited, not all and sundry. So I've done that. I've done a list of people that I'd like, all their names and addresses, which is largely a Christmas card list, just to let them know um, what's happening. Um, if you can change your accounts into joint accounts, do so. If you can't do it, add your partner into someone who in, will have influence in it. Even things like pet insurance. It was in my wife's name. I've now got it in, I'm a person of interest in it so I can do things as well. <clears throat> Who deals with the content insurance? Who's got the car insurance? Who's the um, insurance with? What credit cards have we got? Who pays the credit cards? Um, where does the money come from? How do we contact them? What savings accounts have we got? Um, what's the passwords, as I mentioned earlier? With the pension, how do I get hold of the pension? In my case, I've got a personal self-invested pension, um, but I've had to put my wife down as someone who um, <coughs> uh, t takes it over. Names, address of the, of the solicitor and so forth. All these things, you need to do but the important thing is <sighs> where it comes in live well and die well once you've done all those things and you've got it in writing and your partner or loved one has got it <clears throat> the stress goes away for you and for them I, I know with me I did that and I, I sat with my suitcase thing right okay ready to go now <laughs> I've done it all <clears throat> But the partner also stops worrying because they don't want, they don't want to keep saying, oh, you have to tell me what you've done with the ashes and you want to do this and want to do that. Because they don't want to remind you and them that actually your life could be and may be or will be curtailed. They don't want to talk about that so often, but they do want to talk about it. So for goodness sake, just do it get it out the way, they will look at it, put it down, put it away, bring it out, look at it, look at it again, and then ask questions, then you could order it again. But after that, you can live well, and they can live as well as they can do in the circumstances. Certainly much, much better, not worrying about all the little things that in the back of their mind does stress them out. So for goodness sake, for the sake of others, do this. Bye for now.